Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So, for next week, we don't have it wrote down there yet, but we will assign your vocabulary on Monday, which will be due on Thursday, and you have your first vocabulary evaluation at that time. Okay? The evaluation quiz, yes, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay? Oh, you, it's your first game in Baltic, is that right? Yeah. Oh, maybe we'll move it up to Wednesday. Okay. Oh, we'll yeah, I don't know when your departure is. But, okay, let's look at it this way. That is almost seven, six days away. There's plenty of time for next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to get that done and completed. Some of you probably have it done already. Make sense? Okay, so moving forward then. Okay. If I can find, if I can find appropriate slides, we will go ahead and you get the microscopes out next week. Um, sticky notes? Yes? No? Okay. All right. I don't know if you might want them back. Okay. So. I believe we verbally said, what are the three main parts to a cell? One of them is up there. Okay, so cytoplasm would be one. A nucleus would be two. Uh, you might think mitochondria, but no. That would be with just plants if it's cell wall. We actually drew it up on the board. It might not have been a very good drawing, but it was up on the board. Uh, depends if you use one word or two. Or, no, actually, they're both two words. What type of membrane? So is that it? Cell membrane, plasma membrane, one of those two. That is considered as the third portion. How many parts make up the cell theory? Three, two, two, three. It's actually three. Okay. In other words, how do all cells exist? They come from where? From pre-existing cells. And one way to look at that would be something like... Volleyball players, do you still dive on, on the court and it breaks your skin open? Dive onto the volleyball court to maybe hit the ball before it hits the floor, but it breaks your skin open. Okay? And I'm not even going to acknowledge that, so you might not be wrong, might not be right, but anyway... So, what actually happens then is when we, sell, and we say cells come from, I'm trying to help you out here. When we say cells come from pre-existing cells, you need to make a lot of epithelial cells in quickly. So your cells start to divide. And when that happens, that's why we say cells come from pre-existing cells. So the basic unit of structure and function is what? Cells. They're the basic unit of structure and function. Then finally, the third component of that cell theory.
What are living things composed of? Cells. Living things are composed of cells. Cells come from pre-existing cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function. Okay. So when we say it directs all cellular activities, whether they're dividing or, hmm, when we're talking about George, how, how many of you, and I think that those videos are, are kind of funny because one aspect about that was, okay, so he's going to the gym and I think people are guilty of this. Someone's on the treadmill. They look to see how fast they're running. Oh, geez. I'm only going 4.4 miles per hour. Person to my right or to my left, I look over there. Oh, geez, they're going 6.6 .6 miles per hour. Maybe that's what I should do, too. So once George started hitting plus, 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 that means the speed's going faster and faster, he didn't have a hope because yeah, I'm watching. What are you? What are we doing? Doing our vocab. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he didn't have a chance because his mitochondria cannot produce what enough energy. So then he said he doesn't have a hope. Because he only had one mitochondria. What was the transformation that took place in George's body overnight? Went from my, one mitochondria to about three. Okay. Plus, could he get oxygen and nutrients delivered to those cells efficiently? No, because that's what that inactivity does. That's what the author or the narrator said. Over years of not getting exercise like that, the muscles just don't receive enough nutrients and oxygen. Okay. Does everyone have this that wants it? Okay. Because I think, didn't, did we talk about the Golgi apparatus? That looks familiar for some reason. Okay. All right. There we go. We're a little further than what I thought, which is good. All right. It's unfortunate that do we have a lot of students gone yesterday? today I think so is it strep throat going around is it maybe the flu or is it so I would say it's one or the other probably Because one of the things that we can see, or you'd make an intuitive leap here, is that as white blood cells break down bacteria in our cells, okay, or excuse me, that's not right, waste products that are being um, placed into the cell, whether they're bacteria or whether they're viruses, these work in conjunction with your immune system. Which, okay, yeah, please, I, I know you didn't do that intentionally, but please don't do that, okay? So, one of the things that has to happen is you don't want these components to build up inside of, inside of your cells because that can become toxic, okay? Has anyone ever heard of blood poisoning? Maybe you've heard of it, okay? Because one of the things that can happen, I think it's more so associated with people who have surgery on their legs. 
and, and we don't know why, but what can happen is people who have these limbs amputated, their blood can become infected for some reason. And I would, I would be led to believe because it's just so far away from the heart, because what happens is those, even those clots, if they break off in your leg, blood clots can be a problem. That's why people are put on blood thinners so that those blood clots don't end up in their lungs because that leads to an embolism and people sometimes don't survive that. It's rather unfortunate, but it does happen. Okay. Okay. Moving on. I want to do this one, this one, and that one. Then we'll get to your book. Okay. For people who are filling this content in, one of the things we start at this level, because you'll be getting short answer papers that you fill out, and how do you answer them? A lot of the content you can find with what you're writing down now. It just helps you learn and understand everything we're talking about in class. Now, one of the things that we see happening here, this is how your body produces energy. When it's talking about breaking bonds, this is next chapter, it's called ATP. Is that something that you've ever heard of before? Yeah. You have heard of that. Okay, good. Because if we're really good, we know it comes within the Krebs cycle. Yes? No? No? Okay. which is, again, next chapter, but this is just an introduction into that. Got this one, and then this one, and that'll be it for writing things down.
Okay. So even from prior knowledge, I'll put it back up there. Don't, yeah, I know, just, just a moment. Do you think, I would, I would expect that you can tell me at least one difference, if not two, between animal cells and plant cells. I would expect one. Yeah, exactly. So well, whoever said that, that's one, so you met that threshold. Can we maybe go for that second one? You are really, really close. It's not how they process. Well, it, it leads up to how they process energy. Exactly. Plants have chloroplasts. Okay. It's more so with animal cells and humans. Okay. Actually have what you call mitochondria. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to put this up here. So was that something that you knew over here, or you just remember, glanced down and saw that? Is that something that you knew prior to today? Because you said chloroplast. Yeah, I didn't know if it was something that you just, okay, that refreshed your memory, you just looked down and saw it. But uh, yeah, I thought maybe you'd know one or two, and, and, and we did that. Okay, then finally... We'll, we'll come back to this. Next week, we'll start doing some of this facilitate. We have seen some of these terms. Oops. Come on. There we go. And then, like I said, we will get start winding this chapter down. The first one will be wrapping up shortly. Have you finished any chapters in any other classes yet? Okay. Okay. It's a race, zoology or biology, which one's going to end first? Which class you like better? I asked you that, didn't I? It, has that answer changed? Probably not. Okay. Okay, so does everyone have this content that wants it? Yes, sir, Mr. McKinney. Okay, so what I want you to do, open up page 2, 1, 9, 3. One nine. I'm sorry, one nine four. One ninety four. I said one ninety three, I meant one ninety four. Okay, page 194 where it says endoplasmic reticulum, okay? Now, one of the things that you're going to see inside these cellular structures is smooth ER, and there's going to be rough ER. And just like what you would guess, if you're doing, um, let's say, some sanding, you're doing some carpentry work, then you do some sanding, what type of sandpaper will remove the material 
the fastest. If the, if the number is bigger or smaller, we're talking about the grit on the sandpaper. It's actually smaller. If you have 50 grain sandpaper, that is really, really rough. If you have 250 grain sandpaper, that's really, really smooth. Okay? So the same type of concept. If it's rough, that means it has lots and lots of edges on it, just like that sandpaper, so that's why you call it a rough ER, because it has lots of ribosomes on it. Okay, so page 194, the endoplasmic reticulum. Are we on page 194? Okay, one of you is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't looking at your table. Okay. Also called ER is a membrane, uh, membrane system of folded sacs, interconnected channels that serves as a site for protein and lipid synthesis. Okay. Which is going to become more and more important as we move on in this curriculum, especially protein synthesis. Okay. The pleats and folds of the ER provide a large amount of surface area where the cellular functions can take place. It's typically, this isn't the place where you usually think of these bulges taking place. One of them would be in a place that's certainly key in our body's development. It takes place inside your cranial cavity. So where's your cranium? Yeah, it's inside your head. So there is a type of tissue in there that starts out... just a lump of tissue about like this. Then, as you age to maybe th six weeks, maybe eight weeks, then all of a sudden, what, if this is the brain, what does that start to do? There's lots and lots of cells dividing, but how do you fit more brain into a cranial case? You know the answer, you just don't know you know it. No. Well, you would think so, but it can't do that. Well, I hope not. <laughs> what does this tissue start to do to get more brain tissue, but still within the same space? Expand. Grow. It can't, can't expand. Well, it's already dividing. It's growing, but what's it doing? Those bulges. Your brain starts to create all these bulges in there, so you're getting, you're getting more brain in the same amount of space. So, I suppose you could kind of look at it that way. So that's the same concept here that we see. The pleats and folds of the ER provide a large amount of surface area where cellular functions can take place. The area of ER where ribosomes are attached is called rough endoplasmic reticulum. Just like that rough sandpaper. If it's 50 grit, there's lots of bulges on there. So th that means there's lots of ribosomes on there. Yes, what? You did before class. You got to go again. Okay. Now you can go all the way to the other one, correct? Okay. The area of ER where ribosomes are attached is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That the rough ER appears to have bumps on it. These bumps are the are these bumps are the attached ribosomes that will produce proteins for export to other cells. Now, the major organ that would do that that probably has the highest concentration of rough ER is your liver. It's really hard to function without a healthy liver because it makes so many proteins so it can be exported throughout the body. So if it has, makes lots of proteins, well then that must mean there's 
lots of ribosomes on there, which makes that a rough ER. Okay, so figure 11 shows that these are areas of the ER that do not have ribosomes attached. The area of ER where no ribosomes are attached is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Although the smooth ER has no ribosomes, it does perform important functions for the cell. For example, the smooth ER provides a membrane surface where a variety of complex carbohydrates and lipids, including phospholipids, are synthesized. Smooth ER in the liver detoxifies harmful substances. Now, probably the, the biggest one for you individuals at your age is caffeine. And I think there's a trend that your generation probably doesn't drink as much pop as what the previous generation is. Pop, soda, whichever. Is there anybody out there that says, I drink none of that? I mean, that's, I've got, I think, I don't know, I purchased a, for a, a cube or 24 pack of Pepsi a long time. I still have a lot in the fridge. I just don't drink as much Pepsi as what we used to. Okay. The Golgi apparatus. After hiking boots are made in a factory, they must be organized into pairs, boxed, and shipped. Similarly, after proteins are made in the endoplasmic reticulum, some might be transported to the Golgi apparatus illustrated in figure 12. The Golgi apparatus is flattened sac membranes that modifies, sorts, and packages proteins into sacs called vesicles. Vesicles then can fuse with the cell's plasma membrane to release proteins to the environment outside the cell. Observe the vesicle in figure 12. Okay? So one way to look at that is as follows. When we say the function of that Golgi apparatus is it collects and modifies proteins which I, I don't know why the body does that. It needs to change them for, or for some reason, maybe for different types of cells for their functions, okay? Vacuoles. A factory needs a place to store materials and waste products. Similarly, cells have membrane-bound ve vesicles called vacuoles, okay? Such as plant vacuole shown in figure 13. Is a sac used to uh, store food, enzymes, and other materials needed by the cell. Some vacuoles store waste products. Inter um, interestingly, animal cells usually do not contain vacuoles. If animal cells do have vacuoles, they have are, are much smaller than those in plant cells. Okay, so one of the things that we had just talked about during our presentation, if we are talking about animal cell versus a plant cell, okay? What do they have in common, an animal or a plant cell? What do they have in common? And I'm just not even going to acknowledge that. What do they both have in common? What would both animal and plant cells have? We just read what they don't have. They both have mitochondria. They both have what? Okay. Okay. But these, they have them, but not so much, but it's still present. Okay, so what might direct the activities in plant cells? And and I I, I know we this is how we started off our our uh, presentation today. All cells have these in common. Okay. Okay. 
What else might they have in common? Yeah, they've got cell membrane. And then probably the most important one is that of a nucleus. Okay, so those are aspects that we would expect you to say that they certainly, these are the three most important ones. I mean, if you, if you put mitochondria in there, but this is why I definitely want you to know. Okay, so if that's what they have in common, what might be some differences then between these? Yes, what? Okay, yeah, go down the hall that way. Well, you can do that too. Just don't get lost when you're going that way. All right? Okay. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you, don't get lost. I don't think it's that funny. All right. So what don't they have in common? So pick one or the other. What would a plant cell have that animals don't? That's. I was going to get to that, but you're just a little ahead of me. So chloroplast would be one. So that's on this side, not on this side. What else? I think we said it. Cell wall. Cell wall. Okay. So might there be something else that a plant cell has that we just read that? And I wouldn't expect you to say, oh my gosh, I'm taking in everything we're reading about. Exactly. I didn't know if we were going to catch that. Vacuoles. I don't think I spelled that right. Oh, that is right. Okay. Okay, so... That is what we want you to, to know that plant cells have those where animal, animal cells don't, and we see what they do have in common. Okay? Okay, the next thing I want to do is jump up to the mitochondria, page 197, and then chloroplasts as well. Okay, page 197. Mitochondria, imagine, imagine now that a boat factory, or excuse me, boot factory, boot factory has its own generator and produces the electricity it needs. Cells also have energy and energy generators called mitochondria, okay, uh, which convert fuel particles, mainly sugars, into usable energy. Okay, so figure 16 shows that the mitochondrion has an outer membrane and a highly folded inner membrane that, that provides a large surface area for breaking the bonds in the sugar molecule. The energy produced from the breakage is stored in the bonds, right? Mm -hmm. I, maybe you're discussing mitochondria. I, I, it's to say yes, and I'll believe you. Yes. Oh, what about them then? What do they do? I'm not telling you the truth. But you said you oh. Okay. For this reason, mitochondria often are referred to as the powerhouse of the cells. Okay. Chloroplasts, factory machines, need electricity that is generated by burning, fuel, burning fossil fuels or by collecting energy from alternative sources such as the sun. Plant cells have their own way of using solar energy. In addition to mitochondria, plants and some other eukaryotic cells contain chloroplasts, which are organelles that capture light energy and convert into chemical energy. 
the, through a process called photosynthesis, and that's something that we will get into next chapter. Okay, chapters eight and, and nine, maybe. Okay, chlorophyll gives leaves and stems their green color. Chloroplasts belong in a group of plant organelles called plastids. Uh, we're not too concerned. Oh, yeah, maybe we are. Okay. Uh, which are used for storage. Some plastids store starches or lipids. Others, such as chloroplasts, contain red, orange, yellow pigments that trap energy, give plant structures such as flowers and leaves. Okay. Cell wall, we talked about that already. That's something that you're finding in plants, not animals. We will continue with this on Monday. Okay, that's all I have. We'll catch up to you next time. So just...